Hey guys! Welcome back to the video. My name is Becca and I am here with my favorite books of 2018. I read, I believe the total number was 176 on Goodreads. Some of those were rereads, some of those uh, were like graphic novels, novels. I don't have a stats. I don't have any statistics on that. I think I want to start doing that though. Um, but I don't know if I will. Uh, but yeah, these were the 15 that I absolutely loved that made my like my top favorites. Um, I did or I do have another video uh, that I just filmed yesterday that will probably be going up before this video uh, about the like runners up slash honorable mentions slash other books that I just freaking loved in 2018 because like I said I did read 176 books and yeah there were some like really disappointing reads and I do have that video there's a lot of disappointing reads um and that that video is up if you haven't yet seen that um but I did read some pretty amazing books that I really loved so yeah I didn't want to make this video super long and talk about like all of the honorable mentions or make my favorites list like 30 books long so I just kept my favorites at 15 and then just started a like honorable mentions slash you know runners up so I filmed these videos separately so they wouldn't be super long but yeah here I am with my top 15 I did rank them they are ranked I've never done that before because it's been really hard and this was super hard but I did rank them from 15 to my absolute favorite book so let's get on to this because that's the reason you're here to find out what books made my favorites so number 15 is one I don't have with me because I don't own it and I wasn't able to get it from the library in time and that is Sadie by Courtney Summers. <sighs> that book. So I listened to the audiobook, which I highly recommend doing, because I don't know how I would feel if I had read it physically uh, without listening to it, uh, because I did read it physically while listening. Um, but yeah, I don't know how I would feel if I hadn't listened to it. Uh, it is about Sadie, who has been taking care of her little sister pretty much all her life um and then her little sister goes missing and she uh went uh she turns up dead and Sadie has a really good idea of who has done it and so she goes on this journey uh finding him and exacting her revenge um there is podcasts going so you're you're getting two perspectives one is uh Sadie on going through her journey and then there's the podcast that's like five months later um trying to figure out what happened to Sadie and where she went and it was just such an experience and I really loved it um I will say though that the ending was not my favorite I couldn't I can't stand open ending or open open endings I just don't like them and I would have liked more of an end so I will say I highly st I still highly recommend reading this book it, it has a message that you know should be told and it should be heard and I really love what Courtney Summers did with this book but I just didn't like the ending that's the only drawback of it. This book would have been like my absolute favorite book. It probably would have made it um, higher on the list if it wasn't for that ending. But because of the ending, it is number 15. So number 14 is This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills. This was the first Emma Mills book I have ever read. Uh, and I read this solely based on Julie over at Pages and Pens, her recommendation. She loved this book, and I can see why. 
This book is about Sloane, who is, uh, what's it called? She's moving to Florida from New York. Um, she's leaving everything behind. And she was never really, uh, she never really had, like, so many, like, like, true friends there. She's never really known what it's like to have, like, all these great, like, how do I say this? She's never really known what it's like to have, like, a true friend or, like, a friend group um, until she moves to Florida and she meets this group of friends and, um, at first she doesn't really want anything to do with them, but then she starts to, like, really start liking them and she becomes part of them. And I just really enjoyed this. Um... The romance, there is a romance in there, and the romance isn't really the forefront, which I really liked. The forefront is the friendship, and I just really enjoyed that. This, it was something different from what I've been reading, because I've been reading a lot of just, like, rom-coms, romance, and, like, romance being at the forefront of every book, and I like that. And yeah, like, I've read fantasy where the romance isn't, like, the forefront, but I still have never read a contemporary where romance isn't really has has anything like it has something to do with the story but it's not the main focus and I really like that um and yeah so I get this was that's why this is number 14 it's amazing I highly recommend this and I I've read another Emma Mills book Foolish Hearts and really enjoyed that as well um and I'm planning on reading more by Emma Mills because I really like her books. Number 13. Okay. I thought this would be higher on this list, but it didn't, it didn't happen. But, and this was one of the, like, light, last books I read. I read this pretty late in the year, and I still thought this would be higher on this list, but when I was going through the list, I was like, no, this is number 13. And that is Nevermore. The uh, Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I love this book so much. This gives me the feel of Harry Potter uh, without it like being too much like Harry Potter. It just gives you that feel. I don't know. I just, that's how I feel when I read it. I just felt like I was reading Harry Potter again without actually reading Harry Potter, if that makes sense. So this is about Morgan who... Uh, she's born on the unlucky day of eventide, and she uh, is blamed for every unfortunate thing that happens in her village, in her town, in her city, whatever it's called. Um, and the most unlucky, luckiest thing about being born on eventide is the fact that on your 11th birthday, you were doomed to die. And so on her 11th birthday, she knows it's coming, it's going to happen very soon, until Jupiter North comes in and whisks her away to Nevermore, this magical city, and saves her from dying, pretty much. And there she enters these trials to join the Wondrous Society, because technically, She's illegal. She should not be in Nevermore. Nevermore is a free state, and where Morgan is from is a republic state. And she is not meant to be in Nevermore. So she needs to join this Wonder Society so they don't arrest her and take her back to where she's from. I love this. This is so magical and so wondrous. <laughs> I just, I really loved the use of magic and the trials I thought were really, really fun to read. Um, and Jupiter North has this hotel that's ever changing. And then there's this big cat that's like the housekeeper kind of thing. It just, it's amazing. And I loved it. And I cannot wait to jump into the second book. Number 12, another book that I read really late in the year. And another book that I thought might be uh, higher on this list, but it didn't happen. And that is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. 
You have no idea how special this is. <laughs> like, how just shocked I am to see a Holly Black on this list. Also, how shocked I am to say that I actually finished a Holly Black book. I have never finished a Holly Black book until I read The Cruel Prince. I couldn't believe it, and I couldn't believe how much I loved this book. This is about uh, Jude. She's our main character. Um, her and her sisters and her family lived in the mortal world. Um, Jude and her twin are mortals. Her older sister, though, is half fae. <sighs> One day, when they're pretty young, um, this fey male comes to... Well, he comes to the door and he kills her parents. And he wants to take his daughter, uh, I can't remember, is it Vivi? Something like that, like Vivian, I think. He wants to take her back to the Fey world. Um, and then he sees Jude and Taryn, I think. I think it's Taryn. I'm having a, yeah, Taryn. Um, he sees them and he's like, yes, you're not mine, but I'll take you back anyway. And he raises them as his own, um, even though they're not his, which I thought. And um, they live in the, in the Fae world. And Jude ends up loving this world, and she never wants to go back home. Um, and she wants to become a, like, uh, what's it called? Like a warrior, like uh, Matic. Is it Matic? I'm having a hard time remembering, like, the names. Pretty sure it's Matic. Uh, the man who raised her. Um, and there is, of course, the cruel prince, Carden. He is a dick. And he wants nothing to do with Jude, um, even though they all go to school together. And he makes her feel like shit, and he bullies her. And all of his friends bully her. And it's just... Like, he just makes her... Um, he, he's trying to stop her from wanting to be one of them. Because he doesn't want her anywhere near him. But yeah. There's so much political intrigue. And this is really brutal and dark. And this world is just so interesting to read about. And all of the people I'm supposed to hate. I love, and all the people I'm supposed to like, I hate, <laughs> and I just, I love this book so much, and I'm so glad I read it, and I can't wait to read The Wicked King, because I need to read that, like, now. Alright, number 11, I think we're on, All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. Oh my god, this book made me sob so hard. This is about, uh, it's a dual timeline. So we start in the beginning, in the past, um, where, what are their names? Quinn and Graham meet for the first time. Uh, they're meeting because their, their uh, significant others, the people they're dating, are cheating on them with each other. That's how they meet. Uh, and they end up going their separate ways after this happens. And then they meet up again like a year later and they start up this relationship and get married um and now uh the next the other timeline is seven years later they're married and they're having trouble conceiving quinn wants a child so bad and you know graham does too but it's been so long and they just they don't he doesn't think it's going to happen and he wants it to happen for her but they're having trouble conceiving and it's tearing their marriage apart. This book made me sob so hard. <laughs> I love this so much. It's my favorite Colleen Hoover to date. I have cried with every one of her novels. She just knows how to turn on the waterworks. She knows how to like break your heart. And it's so good and so sad at the same time. But it's like, this is my favorite. This was so beautiful and so heartbreaking, and I highly recommend reading this. It was, oh my god.
this book. <laughs> Number 10 is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. This is about Hazel uh, and Josh, and they meet in college. She doesn't, like, how they meet is not the greatest. Uh, she doesn't have the greatest um, first meeting with them. And um, it's years later. They don't talk to each other. They're not, you know, they don't really even, after that first meeting, they went their separate ways. It wasn't going to be a thing. Um, but yeah, it's years later. Hazel is trying to become this teacher. She's trying to get a job at this school, uh, where her best friend works. I think it's her best friend or it's her friend or she works. Her, uh, her husband is a principal and Hazel really badly wants to work there. Um, and I believe she's an elementary school teacher. I think it's like third grade. And she ends up going to this barbecue at the uh, her friend's her friend's house because um, again the husband is principal and he invites all of the teachers there and the friend invites Hazel so she can meet them just in case she does get the job. And Josh is there because Josh is the friend's brother. Oh my God, and. Hazel is just so eccentric and weird and such a lack of filter and I love her and Josh is so opposite of that like he's so opposite um, but they just comment each other so well and I love them like they at first it's just a friendship like they strike up a friendship and Hazel like immediately tells him we're gonna be best friends that's that's it and he, um, they become best friends. And then they start, uh, hooking each other up with other people. They try to find blind dates for them, and then they strike up a relationship. And it's just, it's beautiful, and I love this book, and I highly recommend it. This is my favorite Christina Lauren to date. It's right up there with, like, Dating You, Hating You. Those are my two favorite books that they have ever written. Oh my god. Okay. Wow. I am really far into this video and I still have quite a lot of books. Where are we at now? Number nine, I think. Crap, I think I left my notebook on the other side. It's fine. Yeah, I think we're at number nine. Uh, I have Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. This is about assassin nuns, daughters of death. It's fantastic. I absolutely love this. This is technically a reread. But I haven't read this in years, and I've forgotten a lot of it. I just remembered really enjoying it the first time I read it. And, yeah, I just, I read it again in 2018. It was amazing. And then there's an epilogue and some additional scenes uh, with these new uh, cover releases. Just this new re reprint. And I just, it really gives you more insight into the second book, which I really liked. And now I can't wait to read the second book. So I'm really excited that I reread this. This is becoming one of my new favorite books. And it was fantastic. Okay, number... What is this, number seven? Okay. Um, Fury Born by Claire Legrand. This is the first in the Imperium Trilogy, um, and uh, what can I say about this? This is about, uh, this is also dual timeline. This is about uh, two queens set a thousand years apart. There's the Sun Queen and the Blood Queen. You don't know which is which until you read this. Um, but yeah, we follow Riel, uh, who is a thousand years in the past, and um, Eliana, who is a the thousand years in the future. This was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I can't wait for the sequel, King's Bane. Um, I can't talk too much about this because of spoilers and I don't want to spoil anything, but Eliana is like this assassin or bounty hunter. Um, and Riel is, oh my god, um, 
Riel? She lives in the palace. I can't remember exactly. I think she's the daughter of one of, like, the the higher-ups that, like, work there or something. That, like, serve the king. Um, and her best friend is the crown prince. And he is, um, like, being attacked and he's about to die. And Riel, um, she saves him by using all of the elements. I think this, yeah, this is elemental magic. So in this world, uh, at least in the past, only, uh, pe people are only able to use, like, one element, um, unless you have, like, this device that allows you to use more than one, something like that. Um, and Riel was able to use all of the elements without using the device, so that definitely, um, showed them that she is either the Blood Queen or the Sun Queen. There are two prophesized queens. Again, you don't know who is, which is which until you read this. But, yeah, this is fantastic. I really loved it. Uh, and I can't wait for the sequel. Oh, God. Number six, right? I think. Oh, no, maybe this is number seven. I think I missed one. Yeah, this is number seven. That was number eight. Sorry. Views of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, the sequel to Strange and Dreamer. Can't talk too much about this because I don't want to um, spoil Strange and Dreamer for you, but that is about Lazo Strange, who has always had this obsession with the lost city of Weep, um, and then this envoy of people come uh, to his... Uh, he lives with the monks, and they come to his convent, or whatever whatever it's called, and uh, they're from Weep, and they're trying to get uh, certain people to come with them, people that can be of use to them and help them, um, help them with their city. I can't really talk too much about it, um, but yeah, Laszlo is able to go to this lost city and find out what happened and why the city was lost to them, and Weep is not its actual name. But the name was um, taken from everybody. Nobody remembers it. Nobody is able to even speak it. Um, if they were able to remember it, they're not. Um, and yeah, it's like all, it's got to do with like gods and stuff like that. And I just really loved it. And so this is the sequel. And I didn't love it as much as the first one, but I did still really love it. And I loved the relationship with Lazo and Sarai and like all of my other characters. And this was just, this is still a really amazing sequel, and I'm really glad that I read it. Next up, oh my god, number six, Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. This is a Viking story, has to do with our main character, uh, oh my god, Elin. She is uh, a Viking, she is part of the Asuka uh, clan. And the Asuka fight, what's it called? Another clan, the Riki. The Asuka and the Riki have been fighting um, for as long as they can remember, uh, and even longer. Um, and Elin, uh, her brother passed, her brother died a long time ago, and during this one fight that the Asuka and the Riki are, are having, she sees her brother with the Rikis helping them, and she can't believe it. Like, he's been dead for five years. Um, and she ends up getting kidnapped by the Riki and taken to their clan and to their, you know, where they live, and this is just fantastic. I didn't know how much I would love this until I read this. Like, I thought I would like it. I would hope, I was hoping I would like it. And I ended up loving this so much. This was just so, so good. And there is a companion coming out. I think it's the the one the sea gave back or something like that. I can't wait for it. This is just so good and I loved it. Oh my god. Okay, so we're finally at like, what, the top five? Right? One, two, three, four... Yeah, we're at the top five. Okay. I'm 25 minutes in. I'm sorry, guys. This is going to be long. But we're here. We're at the top five. Let's do this. Number five. 
okay? These are my five favorite books of 2018. Coming in at number five is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Oh my god. Everybody and their mother has been reading this book. And because of that, I was like, well, I might as well see what the hype is about. And so I did. And holy crap. This book is so, so good. It's all about Evelyn Hugo, and she uh, was this Hollywood star uh, back in the day. And, um, like, everyone wants a, an interview with her. She ends up getting this no-name journalist um, to do the interview. But when the journalist, like, is actually ready to do this interview, she finds out that Evelyn isn't doing an interview with her. She wants to tell her story and she wants Monique, the journalist, to write it. And you learn all about Evelyn and her seven husbands and um, everything that happened in her life. And Evelyn Hugo is a biracial, um, oh my god, bisexual character. And I really loved reading about her and yes, for a time, I thought she was real, and I would have really loved to see a lot of her movies, but she's not real. She's fiction. Oh my god. But this is, this was so great. Um, and I loved, I, I just loved reading this, and reading about Evelyn. Again, for a time, I thought she was real. I thought this was like an autobiography for a time, but it wasn't. Still, this was fantastic, and I really loved reading this. And I'm pretty sure everybody has read this by now, but if you haven't, I highly suggest picking this up. This was definitely, this is definitely on like everybody's favorites list. So that should give you a reason to go pick that up. Okay, coming in at number four, Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adiemi. Oh, this book, this, I read this book pretty much like right after uh, seeing Black Panther, and I wanted more of Black Panther, and I wanted more African culture, and this came right at the right time. This is a fantasy based on African culture, or inspired by African culture, and it's about our main character, Zeely. Yeah, Zeely, who, uh, when she was really young, magic flowed throughout the land, um, but then one day this tyrannical king comes and kills, like, um, he doesn't, he kills a lot of people and also takes magic away and he doesn't like magic and he doesn't want anybody to have magic. So Zeely, um, years, years later, she meets this princess and together they go on this journey to bring magic back along with uh, Zeely's brother and they're on the run from the princess's brother and like the uh, what's it called uh, it's like the uh, I don't know this the king's champion or, or something like that this this great warrior who fights for the king. I, I can't think of anything right now. But yeah, they have to run away from the crown prince and this warrior uh, who is helping him. And it's just this. <laughs> the romance in here, I was not liking. I did like how it kind of ended. Um, but I did not like the romance. And I really, but I really enjoyed this book and I, I didn't care that I didn't like the romance. And now I'm just, like, really intrigued to see how, um, Children of Virtue and Vengeance, or is it Children of Vengeance and Virtue? I think it's Children of Vengeance and Virtue, how, uh, that, how that goes. Because this was just, this was a roller coaster ride, and I loved it. So, yeah, we'll see how the sequel comes. Um, yeah, here we are at the top three. I think you're gonna be able to guess all of these, but we'll see. Number three. Number freaking three. Did anybody think that this wasn't going to be on this list? This is Kingdom of Ash, the 
the final book in the Throne of Glass series. <sighs> the ending. Oh my god. This is the final book. And I still can't believe it. I still want more. And I think Sarah J. Mass is going to be coming out with like the world of Throne of Glass. And I think there will be um, like maybe novellas based on the characters. That's what I'm kind of hoping. I'm kind of hoping that that's what it is. Because if it is, then I'm really going to be happy. Um, because I do feel like there were some characters I didn't get an ending. I would have really liked to see more from those characters and I'm kind of hoping that Sarah J Mass has this in mind and it's going to happen. Um, also I'd really like more of an epilogue for my characters because I just feel like I didn't get much of an ending. Be that as it may, this book was fantastic. This book ripped my heart out and it just stomped on it so many times. Like I. Oh my god, this book was, this book, by the way, is almost a thousand pages long, and it's so action-packed and heartbreaking, like, when there's no action, when there's no war or anything, there is just these heartbreaking moments, <laughs> but there's so many reunions, this is definitely reunion-filled, and I loved it. There were definitely characters that I could have seen less from, and definitely characters I could have seen more from, but... This was definitely an epic conclusion, just the fact that I want more. <laughs> That's why it's at number three, and it was fantastic. Number two. I can't believe this is number two, but every time I think of it, I'm like, yeah, that, that's got to be number two, and that is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is about Stella, who is on the autism spectrum. I believe she has Asperger's, and... She's 30 years old and she doesn't have any experience with like dating or sex or anything like that. She has no social cues um, and so she hires this escort Michael to teach her all of that and because she really wants to like date this guy sort of um, and she really wants to know what it's like um, before going in. She doesn't want to feel awkward. This is definitely steamy and sexy, and it's definitely adult. I did not know that going in, but I was really pleasantly surprised. Um, and this is just so good. The relationship between Stella and Michael was just fantastic. I love this book. Oh man, I love this book so much. And I highly suggest picking this up. If you like adult romance, if you like romance, um... I highly suggest picking this up. Um, it was definitely unique to see a character on the autism spectrum as a main character. Like, I've never really read anything, especially like a romance book, I've never read about a character with that, and I'm glad that this came out when it did, and I would definitely be reading more from Helen Huang in the future. Number one. Okay, let's see. Can any of you guess what number one is? <sighs> Oh my god, this book. This book, again, broke me, like a lot of other books did, but this one definitely really broke me. And it is a movie. I will be seeing that whenever it comes on a DVD, because I was not able to go see it in theaters. And that is The Hate You Give, or Thug, by Angie Thomas. Mm. Wow. I did not know how much I would love this book when I bought this. So I bought this and um, Children of Blood and Bone together on the same day. I read Children of Blood and Bone first, um, like months before, and then I was like, you know what, I should really pick this one up. Everyone's talking about it, they're saying it's amazing. It's, it's inspired by Black Lives Matter movement, um, and it's about Star who witnesses her friend get shot by a cop. Her friend is black and the, the cop is white. This is definitely something that we're dealing with uh, even now. We're still dealing with it even after like the Black Lives Movement and everything coming out, talking about it, this book, the movie. We're still dealing with stuff like this and it's really heartbreaking to see. Um, and this book was 
book was really heartbreaking. But I really loved Star, and I loved everything that happened, like everything she did. I don't know what I would have done if I witnessed that. Like literally her friend, like she was in the car with him. They got stopped by the police and yeah, her friend wasn't like, he, he was a smart ass and you could definitely tell he didn't keep his mouth shut. And he was just making sure she was okay. And the cop shot him. And I feel like when reading this book, it was definitely excessive force. Um, he didn't need, like, one shot in the leg would have done something. I don't know. I, I don't know what I would have done if I was there. I don't know what if I would have done if this, like, happened to me. I, oh my god. I listened to this on audiobook. The, I definitely recommend listening to the audiobook for it. <sighs> this book is definitely one that everybody needs to read. And again, I feel like I'm one of the last people that read it. But yeah, this is definitely my my favorite book of all time now or not my f my favorite book but it's definitely on the list of my favorite books of all time it has to be on there for just the message for the writing for the characters for every single thing on in this book this book was just perfection and again everybody needs to read this and I, I really do suggest listening to the audiobook because the audiobook is fantastic the narrator like, I started listening to it, and I really like reading al along with it, but there are times when I was like, I, and this really never does happen, but I'm just like, I need to listen to The Hate You Give. Um, like, I would just want to pick up the audiobook. It wasn't just because, okay, I'm in the car, I should probably listen to the audiobook. It's not because, like, oh, you know, I have my headphones, or I'm cleaning my room, I should probably listen to the audio, like, listen to an audiobook. No, this was... I'm literally, like, sitting in my room, like, okay, you know what, I'm putting on the audiobook. Like, I don't care if I'm just laying here, staring up at the ceiling. I need to listen to this audiobook. I need to keep listening. I can't stop. I'm at work on break, and I put on my audiobook, and that never happens. Like, I, I either just read on my phone or read a physical copy. I don't ever, like, listen to anything, but I always brought my headphones just because I wanted to keep listening. And I loved that feeling and I love this book and again this is number one. Oh my god and it's number one for a reason so that's all for me today guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed this um, what were your favorites of 2018 let me know down below I would really like to know so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again with another video happy reading Bye.